Okay, we're going to start with the cranial bones. This bone right here is frontal. Our skull here for comparison. So it sits in the body like this. Okay, and if you look on this guy, you can see the frontal bone attaches to the parietal bones in the back. Zygomatic bones here also attaches to those, attaches to the nasal bone. And also makes up part of the bony orbit. So if we look at the frontal bone by itself, we have this big uh, flat place. It's called the frontal squama, basically the forehead. If you look right between the eyebrows, so here's your eye socket. This little space is called the glabella. It's kind of like the bump between your eyebrows there. This part that hangs off of the main part of the frontal bone attaches to the zygomatic bone, and we call this the zygomatic process of the frontal bone. Now with these bones of the skull, when you're naming a process, you're going to name it for the bone that it touches and for the parent bone. So you can't just say zygomatic process, you have to say zygomatic process of the frontal bone. And this is a zygomatic process because it touches the zygomatic bone. You can see it on here, right here, and right here. So here's your zygomatic bone, here's your zygomatic process of your frontal bone. Notice it touches the nasal bone here. So this piece of bone is called the nasal process of the frontal bone. This rim that forms the top part of the orbit is called the supraorbital margin. And on most skulls, that supraorbital margin will have a hole in it or a notch for a nerve to come through. Now this guy doesn't really have a hole or a notch. This one doesn't have a great one either. I'll try to find one to show you a better hole. But if you see a hole right there in that margin, it's supraorbital foramen on the supraorbital margin. The orbital plate is this surface right here, this smooth surface. Now notice you can see that from the inside too, so this is orbital plate. And you can also see that if the skull were laying like this, so I've taken the calvera off, the skull cap, and this flat portion right here is the orbital plate of the frontal bone. This whole entire space is where the front part of the brain sits, and it's called the anterior cranial fossa. So that would be the part that my fist is in. The brain kind of sits in there like that. That's the anterior cranial fossa. Frontal sinuses are going to be inside this bone. Sinuses are just spaces within the bones. And you can kind of see those here. And I'll show you a different view of frontal sinuses in a minute. We'll do them all together. So that's frontal bone. Parietal bones are very simple. There's two of them. They look identical and they're very plain. The only thing on a parietal bone is that you have this bump on the side called the parietal eminence. It's just the widest part of the skull. And you can see that when you look at a skull. This right here, parietal eminence. Occipital bone. This is the outside of the occipital bone. So we'll look at it, how it sits in a skull. Okay, like this. Okay, so you can see it touches the parietal bones there. And underneath here going to help form the base of the brain. You have a very large hole in the occipital bone. That's where your brain stem turns into the spinal cord. That's called the foramen magnum. And you have these two large bumps on either side of the foramen magnum where the occipital bone rests on the atlas of the vertebra. These are called the occipital condyles. These are, might be hard to see on the video, but if we look on the outside of this bone, you can see it's got some bumps and some ridges. This most prominent bump here, kind of right in the middle, is called the external occipital protuberance. You can feel that on yourself right in the back of your head. This guy has one as well right there. There's a little ridge of bone that runs along that external occipital protuberance right here. That's called the superior nuchal line. This colored bone works better. Superior nuchal line here. You have another ridge of bone below it called the inferior nuchal line. 
and that's where your ligamentum nuchae is going to attach. And then you have a ridge of bone running straight up and down called the external occipital crest. So it's sort of like a cross with your superior nuchal lines and your crest in the middle and then your external occipital protuberance as the most prominent bump on the outside. And on this one, it's a little bit harder to see because it's white, but here's your crest, superior nuchal line, protuberance, and inferior nuchal line. And then here's your foramen magnum. If we look on the inside, you can see the internal occipital crest very easily, straight up and down. This part of the occipital bone is called the basoocciput, or the basilar region of the occipital bone. And underneath, on that basal occiput, you'll have a little tubercle right there in the middle. It's called the pharyngeal tubercle. It's very tiny. It doesn't really stick off very much, so it's kind of hard to see. Pharyngeal tubercle. The hypoglossal foramen, or canal, is going to be under the, con the condyles. You can see it right there. Right there. So if I put the stick through it, that's how it would run. And then you have one here. It's going to go right under that condyle. You can see those from this side, right there. There's the hypoglossal nerve that runs through there. So that's the hypoglossal canal and allows passage of the hypoglossal nerve. This whole space where my fist is is the posterior cranial fossa. Look at it on here. You can see this big space here. So this was anterior cranial fossa, this is posterior cranial fossa. Okay, that's occipital bone. Now we'll look at the temporal bone. It looks like this. It sits in the skull like this. Okay, so you can see it forms the ear region. You can feel this big bump here behind your ear attaches to the zygomatic bone makes a suture with the parietal bone, sphenoid bone, and the occipital bone in the back. This bone has quite a few little features on it. You notice here we've got this real flat piece. This is called the squamous region of the temporal bone. The tympanic region is this region around the outside part of the ear. The mastoid region is the region in the back, has this big bump on it. The petrous region is this region on the inside of the bone where your ear ossicles are located. Petrous means rock, so this looks kind of like a rocky cliff, so it's called the petrous region. If you look inside of the skull, like this, you can see that petrous region right here. Now the temporal bone is going to also form the rest of the cranial fossa, right here, called the middle cranial fossa. So anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa, sort of like a butterfly in the middle, and then posterior cranial fossa here. If we look on the outside first, you notice this little process sticking off here. That helps make part of that zygomatic arch. You can see it right here, connecting to the zygomatic bone. So this is the zygomatic process, since it attaches to the zygomatic bone, of the temporal bone. The zygomatic process of the temporal bone makes up the zygomatic arch with the zygomatic bone. This is the mastoid process, big bump in the back. And this little process is called the styloid process. Zygomatic process, styloid process, mastoid process. You'll notice a hole here. It's called the external acoustic meatus. That's where sound enters the ear. <laughs> Turn this a little bit, and we have a little depression here, right behind that zygomatic process, and that's where your mandible is going to fit. So your mandible will fit in there like that and that's called the condylar fossa. Condylar fossa. In between the mastoid process and the styloid process, you have a little hole right here called the stylomastoid foramen. Stylomastoid, and it's a hole, so it's a foramen. And that stylomastoid foramen allows for passage of the facial nerve, cranial nerve 7. It's very teeny tiny on this skull. Never mind, I don't think that helps you.
But look between those two processes, the styloid and the mastoid, and you'll see it right there. Stylomastoid foramen. If we look on the inside, we can see a couple more holes. We have our petrous region here, and right on the side of that petrous region is a hole. That's called the internal acoustic meatus, and that allows for passage of the vestibular cochlear nerve for hearing imbalance. And we have one other hole on this bone, and you can see it right in the tip of the petrous part. And notice that when I stick this uh, probe through there, that it goes all the way through that petrous region and comes out over here. That's called the carotid canal and allows passage of the carotid artery. So you could see it from this side or this side, right on the end of that petrous region. Don't get it confused with the internal acoustic meatus, which is on the side of the petrous region.